What's going on? She made Diamond K in here, of course. The Diamond K Show.com on FireTelevision.com. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for tuning in. Election season is upon us. We're in the midst of it. Spring is in the air. Depending on where you live at, uh, the weather is either good or about to get good. What I want to talk about today is the GOP, the Republican Party, and the fact that they are trying to step up their courtship, their appeals to black candidates and black voters. This is something that um, the GOP has has been weak on for a number of years. So they are trying to step up their recruitment of black candidates. Because you want to get black voters, you have to have more black candidates. Now, they're trying to make these inroads with the voters uh, ahead of November's midterm elections. Midterm elections are coming up. Folks are disgruntled. A lot of folks, a lot of black people are disgruntled with Democrats. So the opportunity is there. The vulnerability is there. Now, black candidates and uh, black voters, for that matter, have historically been a reliable group for Democrats. What has that gotten us? It's gotten us some things. It, we've made some inroads there, but it's like the Democrats collectively as a whole just automatically expect that vote. Because they say the Republicans, oh, you're not going to vote Republicans. So sometimes they fall and Democrats are falling into a pattern of just paying us lip service during campaigns. Oh, yeah, 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 we're going to do that. Oh, yeah, 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 we're going to do that. Oh, yeah, this, oh, yeah, we're gonna, we, we need to look at that, right? But then when they get in office, we don't see these things. Now, is this only a Democrat thing, issue? No, this, this is a re Republican issue? No, this is a politician thing across the board. So you, you got to weigh it all out. You have to weigh it all, all out. Republicans recognize that their recruitment and messaging strategies uh, stand to, uh, I don't they, they think they are. They, they, they think that they stand to resonate with the uh, crucial voting block. But I don't know. They, they, they're going to have to uh, revamp a lot of things to get black people in mass to come over to the Republican Party. A lot of the policies that they enact directly impact black voters. So it's kind of hard to get that trust, even though they're disgruntled with Democrats. In this cycle alone, 80 black Republicans have filed to run in House races across the country according to the National Republican uh, Congressional Committee, right? So black Republicans are trying to make inroads in other races. Let's look at Georgia, for instance. Georgia, Herschel Walker, Herschel, yeah, that Herschel Walker is running against the incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock. Uh, and in Illinois, Richard Irving, the first black mayor of Aurora is running in the GOP primary to challenge the incumbent governor, uh, Pritzker. So uh, there are opportunities there. So when, when you look at the, the Georgia race, somebody in that uh, seat is going to be a black uh, politician, be it the Democrat or be it the Republican. There are two black Republicans in the House, one in the Senate, None in a governor's mansion. So there are a lot of opportunities there. But when we talk about policies, right, we talk about policies. And I think when you look at that, that's where many black people get fuzzy with <laughs> their support uh, or potential support of a Republican. So uh, if you remember uh, in Virginia, Lieutenant Governor uh, Winsome Sears had a historic victory in November 21 when she became the first woman of color elected to statewide office in the Commonwealth. 
So black Republicans uh, also had uh, gains in the Commonwealth's off-year election. So the black community is seeing momentum, according to Paris Denard, who is the national spokesman and director of Black Media Affairs for the Republican National Committee, the RNC. They think that uh, black Republicans can get elected. I don't know. I mean, we, we've seen it here and there. Uh, but in mass, the policy, the stigma is, uh, is what troubles me <laughs> and what troubles uh, uh, many black people uh, around the country. So can Democrats who, I mean, quite frankly, Joe Biden is a middle of the road, weak, uh, moderate, candidate. And he hasn't done a whole lot to energize the black community. So what I, I feel, if I'm reading the tea leaves, what I feel is happening is that folks are not energized and they may stay home. Are they going to cross over to the Republican Party in mass? I slow down. I don't know about that. Uh, if I'm Paris Denard, he may think that he sees something like that. And I'd like to talk with Paris Denard about this. Uh, uh, what is the Republican Party offering Black people? Why would they do that? Just because Joe Biden is weak, they're going to just cross the line to the to, uh, Republican Party? No, it doesn't work that way. Now, if you look at Republicans who crossed and voted for President Obama, that's because his uh, platform, what he was saying versus how believable he was to even register Republicans uh, caused them to switch their vote. Uh, they didn't switch their party, but they did. He did get a lot. President Obama did get a lot of Republicans to vote for him. And then, of course, those same people voted for Trump uh, after them. So uh, can a candidate come? And it's not it's not Trump. Uh, could a candidate come to the Republican Party uh, nationwide and convince black voters in mass to vote for him. I don't know. I, it ain't Trump. Trump won't be someone who could do that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but when you look at the Republican Party, you do not see many faces that look like the voting bloc that they claim to value. There's something to that. They they don't see many people of color in the party, in the party. We talk about candidates, forget, forget that. It's just people that are just working within the party. Uh, we don't see a lot of black faces. And this, uh, th this plays a part. This, 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 this plays a part. So um, uh, is there an effort, you know, by the GOP establishment to try to improve this? Uh, I think that they recognize that they need improvement but I don't see any actions to actually uh, foster this uh, uh, jump that they want to see. Right? You got we have some races that have some black candidates, and that, that's commendable, I suppose. Uh, but all in all, the RNC it has open community centers aimed at appealing to uh, different communities, Hispanic and Native American communities. Uh, Asian Pacific Islanders. I, I haven't seen them do this in the black community. Um, but uh, this inclusiveness and intentional engagement efforts, throwing them trinkets, that's not going to be enough. That's, that's not going to be enough at all. Uh, Republicans have a messaging problem. Republicans have um, very specific views on the economy, very specific views on crime. And uh, I just don't know if that's going to appeal the uh, current platform of the Republican Party. Is that going to appeal to black voters? Now, 35 um, percent of people of color, according to the Wall Street Journal survey that they released last week, said that 35 uh, percent of people of color said that inflation has caused a major financial strain on their lives. Now, we cannot expect the Republican Party to be a party that is going to speak to that need. 
They don't care about that need for the black community, and that is the problem. Now, on top of that, so let's look at some more from this Wall Street Journal poll. Wall Street Journal poll found that 44% of black women appeared to be among the groups in the survey that reported being negatively impacted by inflation's major financial strain in their lives. Black women, a very foundational and reliable voting block of the Democratic Party. And policies that are championed by Republicans do not benefit Black women. In many instances, they demonize them. Many instances. Uh, so uh, Republicans can argue that they've made all these inroads in their messaging on crime, which I disagree with. Uh, and, you know, Democrats have dropped the ball, dropped the ball uh, uh, numerous times. Now, we talk about uh, uh, messaging, tying Democrats to rising crime rates, tying Democrats, uh, mainly progressives, uh, in the defund the police movement. That is, is what Republicans are doing. Uh, that I don't think is going to get them a lot of new black <laughs> voters uh, you know, swinging their way. Uh, the most uh, loyal black Democratic voters tend to be more politically moderate uh, because, you know, we're not too, um, uh, yeah, we're not too far to the left, traditionally, uh, the most loyal ones. But you have, we, we have some very loud voices in the progressive wing of the Democratic Party. So I don't know if you're going to be able to swing those. Uh, but all in all, most Black voters are moderate. They're reachable, but the policies are what would have to change. And uh, just pointing at the faults of Democrats uh, in the moderate, ring, uh, moderate wing, Joe Biden is a moderate, pointing to his faults alone, people know him and they know that he's moderate and they know that he's weak and he's, you know, Uncle Joe, and, and, and they know that about him. So that alone is not going to be enough. So then we look at uh, COVID-19 restrictions and, and uh, Republicans genuinely wanted them to go away. And uh, Democrats were kind of more, you know, uh, uh, lenient with, um, not lenient, they, they were just more stringent with uh, the mass mandates, more stringent, stringent with uh, the vaccine requirements, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So trying to draw that line there, trying to draw the line with the police defunding and, and, and the messaging uh, debacle that was that. Trying to uh, now blame Biden for the rise in gas prices. All of these different things are not going to be enough. Uh, the Republican Party is going to have a very hard time uh, recruiting African-American candidates. When you look at the policies and the positions that have been more harmful to the African-American community than anything else, uh, that's come from Republican Republican circles, they're, they're, the, these policy positions, their commentary, their comments, the leadership within the Republican Party, all of these are roadblocks that I don't think that Republicans uh, can uh, get over. I don't, I don't think that they can get over those hurdles, but they're going to continue to try. They're going to try to step up their appeals. They're going to try to get your votes, and they're going to try to get candidates to run as members of the GOP. Uh, not sure how that's going to work out for them. Uh, you heard my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Diamond K Show, of course, on firetelevision.com, anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, YouTube.com slash DJ Diamond K, the WRF radio app. You can go there, Facebook, uh, any of the social networks. Just type in The Diamond K Show, hashtag The Diamond K Show to check out any of our episodes. And uh, the legendary Lifestyle Cafe is a community-based wellness space driven by local business partnerships and provides health-conscious foods and products. 
They're located at 1301 North Broadway in Baltimore, Maryland. The legendary Lifestyle Cafe is open 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Plant-based food, cold-pressed juice, wellness products like sage, crystals, organic, loose herbs, and much much more. They have apparel. There's plenty of educational resources. If you need a space to meet or work, there is Wi-Fi available. I mean, you got to come through the legendary Lifestyle Cafe. Delivery is available. Tap in on all social media at Legendary Lifestyle Cafe or visit LegendaryLifestyleCafe.com. You've been David K and we will be back with more of the show after this.